Thank you, Jean-Marc. And I'm very pleased to be here to present uh, and to share my experience on CSM, contrast thermography, and on uh, this new machine on the uh, Scenograph Pristina, with, uh, where there is a new version and, uh, of uh, contrast mammography. Uh, so to start, here are my disclosure. And probably you know a little bit uh, contrast mammography, but with these uh, small examples, uh, you will uh, see what the main interest uh, for contrast mammography. This is a difficult mammography with a dense uh, heterogeneous breast. <coughs> this patient was recalled after screening for this suspicious uh, lesion on the right breast, and also she has pain on the left, <coughs> but very difficult to see. On ultrasound, there was nothing on the right. And finally, she was included in our protocol where we evaluating uh, contrast mammography. And you see it's extremely easy to find that there is a suspicious area here on the left, at the union and inferior part of the breast, absolutely nothing on the right. It was only glandular tissue here. And finally, on second look ultrasound, we find a suspicious lesion, which was finally an invasive carcinoma. The interest of contrast mammography is that we are not disturbed by dense breasts. So it's uh, one uh, good interest of this technology. And you see that uh, all the normal glandular tissue is uh, nearly suppressed, is uh, recombined, and with no absolutely no uptake. And usually in comparison with MRI, which is the aim usually with contrast examination, we have less false positive in comparison with MRI. So this technique is only four views. And uh, if you compare with MRI today, you have 1,000 to 4,000 images. So for a clinician, for example, that's very difficult to understand. And uh, in with this technology, you have four views. It, it looks like a normal mammography with high sensitivity, high specificity. It's really fast and easy to acquire for the technicians. Easy to interpret also. We don't have so many uh, suspicious uptake and so many glandular uptake of foci in comparison with MRI. So the technique, finally, it's a combination of uh, full feed digital mammography and uh, iodinated contrast agent with IV injection. And uh, to allow this, the mammograph has to be modified to maximize the sensitivity for low concentration of iodine to see the contrast uptake. And uh, we have to obtain low and high energy. It's like a spectral imaging. And for this, a copper filter has been adapted and inserted in the mammography device. And so we obtain low energy views around 33 cave and high energy around 45 to 49 cave. So that's why the, the physical principle of the technique to obtain an optimal high energy, high energy image and optimal low energy image. And finally, these images after injection are recombined. And the final image is quite a subtraction. It's not really a subtraction. It's a recombined image where you will see the uptakes. And so this technology has been FD cleared in um, 2011 by, uh, by GE. So injection is exactly the same as we do on CT. Exactly same dose and uh, same contrast agent. Uh, usually we perfuse the patient on the arm. And the breast has not been uh, compressed when uh, you we inject. That's very important. So we, com we inject as the patient is seated or lying on the bed. So usually we use the ultrasound bed, which is uh, near um, the mammography room or inside the mammography room, if you have uh, the possibility. That's better and more reproducible to use a power injector and uh, with a high bolus and the exactly the same as we do on, on CT. Um, really fast, reproducible, and we rinse with saline, of course. And side effects are the same as our iodine, of not, uh, not very important. And of course, allergy is a um, contraindication, but it's not so common. Um, so here is an example. Says we have the ultrasound bed in, uh, the m inside the mammography room. And after, we have, we have plenty of time to uh, put the patients and to install the patient through the mammography unit. Usually, uh, we start the examination at two minutes after injection. So we have two minutes from the, the beginning of the injection 
to uh, the starting of this image, so we don't have to rush. It's, uh, it's really, f really easy. So what we interpret now, we interpret low energy image. That's, this image is quite important to detect microcalcifications. And finally, the low energy image looks like a normal mammography. So this breast is injected, but you will not see the injection. And you have to interpret microcalcifications if they are. They, they are completely part of the examination. And then you will have high energy image, but this image is not displayed on the screen. You don't have to interpret. But you have this image, which is a recombined view. You have to interpret this recombined image. If there is a suspicious update, usually it's obvious. And uh, you will interpret with a morphological and heterogeneous of contrast inside of the lesion. We don't use curve, as we can do on MRI. We use the, um, only the morphological uh, criteria. Exactly, and it's on the same model as MRI, so with mass and non-mass enhancement. Mass for um, benign lesions or invasive lesions, and non-mass for uh, DCIS, for example, or lobular carcinoma. So uh, how do we proceed? So after injection, so after at two minutes, we set the mammograph device in the contrast mode. So we just have, the technician has to push a button to make the, the mammography on the contrast mode. And then we acquire and we proceed like a normal mammo. But for each view, two images would be acquire low and high energy, and the station will recombine this image. And on the workstation, we will have to see the recombined view. And uh, so, it's, so right, right CC, left CC, right, C, right MLO, left MLO, and mediolateral view if uh, it's necessary. This is a typical example of a carcinoma here with uh, bifocal contiguous lesions. And they are mainly obvious as this with speculated margins with nothing on, on the left. So clinical performance so in the literature, and, um, some, pa some papers have been sub sub published. Uh, this one from my hospital uh, since uh, 2011 now. And uh, if you co we compare contrast mammography to mammography and mammography plus ultrasound, this technology improve the cancer detection and specificity. So sensitivity and specificity are better with contrast mammography in comparison with mammography. And uh, also one of the interest is that uh, the improvement uh, does not vary with dense breast also, because we know that dense breast are a bit complicated to interpret and we can have false, no false negative. But now the interest is to compare with MRI because uh, contrast mammography is a technique with iodine injection. Of, of course, it's very important to compare with MRI injection. So if we compare contrast mammography and MRI, some papers or, or also have been published. Finally, we are nearly at the same sensitivity for MRI for the index lesion, slightly lower for detection of small additional malignant lesion, but uh, with a good point is a higher specificity because we don't have so many additional benign foci or benign glandular tissue which are very disturbing in MRI. Maybe because of the lower sensitivity of iodine also, but finally when you combine sensitivity and specificity, we obtain a better accuracy with uh, contrast mammography in comparison with MRI. And now when we interrogate patients for the, um, what they think and what they feel during this examination, and especially if they have MRI and contrast mammography in this paper, they evaluate uh, all uh, this quality and uh, feedback for patients. And finally, patients feel that uh, they prefer um, contrast mammography versus MRI because it's faster examination only 10 minutes maximum, and the longest is to perfuse the patient. And also it's less noisy and less anxiousness also. And finally, when we compare tumor size with histology, compare uh, tumor size in contrast mammography, in MRI, it's about the same for the index lesion and additional lesion. So this also could be used for breast cancer staging, for example. 
So now, what are the indications today? And uh, in my hospital, we use it for two main indications. It's breast cancer staging, and especially when we have dense breast, and especially the very accurate to detect infiltrative ductal carcinoma or discordant size at least one centimeter between mammography and ultrasound. And also the second indication is non-concrusive mammography. It's, it's quite common, and sometimes we have indications of MRI in uh, these indications, and it's quite easy to perform in the same day the contrast mammography inside of an MRI, for example. So in, uh, in my institution, uh, we, we are practicing mainly these two indications for contrast mammography. Also, you can detect uh, cancer recurrence, exactly as uh, MRI will do. And uh, also, it could be used for treatment evaluation, but not so many publications have been this, so um, only uh, local uh, experience <coughs> have been made on uh, treatment evaluation, but it's quite comparable as uh, MRI and also faster with MRI. I would say no for high-risk woman screening because it's a radiation technique and we know, we know that these patients are more radiation sensitive for BRCA1, BRCA2 women. And also we have uh, an efficient screening with MRI. So we recommend MRI and not high risk uh, and not uh, CSM for this patient. Uh, so now we have a new version of um, Cenobrite uh, available on the Cenograph Pristina. So it will be um, commercialized very soon, I think. And we still evaluate it in, uh, in my institution. Um, we, it was installed uh, six uh, months ago. And um, we are the objective, we are comparing this technology, so with um, examination on the Pristina and on the first version of uh, contrast mammography on essential. Patients are randomized in both arms and uh, we compare image accuracy and detection of lesion. Also, because sometimes we have artifacts on uh, contrast mammography, especially well, that we call the breast-in-breast -breast artifact. It's a repetition of the, of the skin, skin of the breast inside the breast. And uh, I will show you some images. So usually it's not very difficult to interpret. Sometimes it uh, will be a little bit marked. And so that's why the idea was to reduce artifacts and to increase uh, signal-nose ratio for contrast uptakes. So how it is possible? So the, um, the Pristina and uh, contrast mammography on Pristina has been a little bit modified physically. A silver filter has been installed in the machine instead of a rhodium filter. And uh, this has the possibility to reduce time exposure of low energy image and to improve recombination because uh, also it will reduce the risk of movement artifacts for patients because the time exposure is lower. Also in the technique, there is a reduction of copper filter thickness and this reduction of this thickness also improves the ratio and the, mm, between image quality, time exposure, which, which is lower and also the glandular dose is lower. There is a new grid has been installed in the system, and this has the, the objective, and this has been uh, the possibility to improve scattered radiation and this reduction of this artifact, this typical artifact we call breast in breast on the recombined image. Also optimization of automatic exposure parameters, uh, so they are adapted to breast thickness and breast density. So the, um, also it will decrease radiation dose, especially in small breasts. Improvement on recombination software to reduce artifacts. And also, final improvement is uh, improvement of tube thermic capacity. So it, it allows uh, to do more examinations in, um, in a, a small time. So here is an example of Cenobrite. So the first version available on Cenograph uh, Essential. And so you see uh, here the typical breast-in-breast -breast artifact. It's uh, the repetition of the line. And in fact, it's a recombine, uh, recombination artifact. This breast is very dense. And so it was, uh, it was normal here. 
And maybe it could be difficult to interpret these small uptakes because it's at the end of this breast-in-breast um, -breast artifact. But finally, it was nothing. And uh, here is a case of Sinobrate HD. These are two different patients. Uh, HD, case A, and this one, Sinobrite, with previous version. And you see, very typical, this breast-in-breast. -breast, and it's absolutely disappeared on the Sinobrite HD. Also, the change, major change, when you see the image, uh, contrast uptake will be more visible. And also, the, um, the uptake of the skin is in disappears. Of the it's also an artifact. Or you see here the contrast of the, of the skin. And also... The normal contrast, contrast uptake of the nipple, which sometimes could be more difficult to interpret, especially if you have a lesion located on the subarvalar area. And here, you don't have this physiological uptake. But it's very, very low. That in that ID, if you have a lesion here, you will see more clearly. Here is an example of the breast in breast. And again, another case. You see here very suspicious lesion, Barrett's 5, typical breast in breast artifact and cenobrite and cenobrite HD. This is a malignant lesion, multifocal lesions with a um, very uh, typical malignant lymph node. You see there is a nipple retraction, but we don't have any suspicious uptake all around the nipple because um, it's, uh, it's not an artifact. Uh, no uptake here on the, on the skin. Here you have a slightly, a slight little bit of breast impressed artifact, but not as obvious than in the previous version. So in this case, it's a multifocal malignant lesion on the, on the left with uh, invading lymph nodes. So this trial uh, started now in May, and we didn't finish yet. Uh, we will finish in, in, in a few, few weeks. We include patients from 40 to 70 years, we exclude by one, by BRCA1, BRCA2 women because uh, of uh, CSM, and we include patients which will, who will need a contrast mammography, so by rates, especially by rates 0, 4, and 5. And of course, we exclude patients with contra, uh, contraindication of iodine injection, and we include patients in both arms, randomly selected, and 50 patients in both arms. And uh, we will evaluate percentage of artifact, image quality, sensitivity, specificity. So I will not give final results now because the study is not finished, but I will show you some cases from this study to show you um, uh, some examples of this um, new um, Cenobrate HD image. So let's go to clinical cases. So case one, 53-year-old woman. She has a palpable mass on the right breast, and I will show you low energy image, recombined view, and ultrasound. So it's not a really very dense breast, as you can see. It's an asymmetric uh, mass here on the, on the right. And we don't know exactly if it's one lesion or two lesions. So uh, she has been included in the, in the protocol. And here is the result of this image. So it's very clear that there are two malignant lesions here. You can measure very easily the size here on this mass, the size of the other mass, and also the size between. And uh, you see here two suspicious mass, and also there was some DCIS here bet in between, between uh, non-mass, what that we call non-mass enhancement. Usually the contrast must be very high, like this. Don't know if it's uh, yes on the screen. And you will have to um, evaluate irregular margins here, speculated, and also the internal contrast uh, enhancement. So here, bifocal lesion, and it was also fine on ultrasound with a very suspicious lesion there, grade 3 carcinoma. And finally, she was treated with um, new adjuvant chemotherapy, surgery, and radiation therapy. And we found two, uh, two lesions, as we had uh, the image on, the, on mammography. Um, case two, patient, 41-year-old uh, patient, palpable mass on the left breast, and she had a uh, um, bad, uh, very difficult history, medical history, because she had a stroke with coil in the, the, the head, and also lumbar fusion with scoliosis, so it could be difficult for her to uh, receive an MRI due to um, this uh, history. 
also I will show you some um, contrast image and ultrasound. And you see very, very dense breast. Maybe the contrast is a little bit um, high on the screen. But uh, anyway, it's, uh, it's uh, extremely dense. We don't see a lot of things here on the normal mammography. It's a, it's a low energy image, uh, so, you, so you will not see this um, contrast uptake here. But if you see the recombined view, it's uh, more obvious. And a multifocal carcinoma here on the left. You see, in this case, no breast-in-breast -breast artifact, no skyline artifact, and no nipple artifact. And also, we have um, a contrast uptake between these three uh, more obvious masses, which are not really a mass, so as that we call also in CSM a non-mass enhancement. It was also DCIS linked to this um, case. Uh, in this case, she has also dense breasts, and we have a quite uh, slightly um, background enhancement also. We can have this also with CSM, usually less important as we do, we could have on MRI, but we, it's still possible to have background enhancement. In this case, a little bit um, breast in breast artifact, it was only background enhancement here. And uh, here is at least uh, two nodules uh, which were found on uh, ultrasound, and it was again a grade three carcinoma with a uh, positive lymph node, and she had mastectomy, chemotherapy, and uh, radiation therapy. And at the end, the, in the final histology, there were DCIS and uh, malignant uh, infiltrated carcinoma. Another case, young woman, she had the. Um, multiple breast cancer familial history on mother's side and a, a right palpable mass that appeared recently. Again, very difficult breast to interpret. I don't know if you saw, if you see something suspicious. Right, left, right. Yeah, distortion here, but um, quite difficult. Maybe here an additional one, but very difficult to see. And here, it's uh, clear on uh, CSM. You have this mass, which was distortion, but at least four, maybe five different foci, malignant ones, and they are quite obvious here. And here, you see, it's interesting because we don't have any breast in breast artifact, and um, signal loss ratio is quite high. It was also a high grade carcinoma here and absolutely no suspicious uptake, even sh if she was young and uh, with a very dense breast. So it's uh, quite easy to interpret uh, in this case. And of course, for surgeons, it's very easy to understand because they have only four images. They look like normal mammography, so it's uh, quite, um, quite efficient. In my institution, the surgeons uh, and oncologists prescribe regularly contrast mammography. We do also MRI, but uh, for them, and uh, it's um, quite normal to prescribe and to make a prescription of contrast mammography. And uh, we find at least three additional lesions on ultrasound, of course, very suspicious with irregular margins, and uh, here very small ones. And finally, it was an R2 positive grade three lesions, very aggressive ones, and she had a mastectomy with um, also shared DCIS. Uh, another case, 63-year-old woman, palpable mass on the right breast. And this case, we have an MRI, and I will show you the corresponding MRI. Again, even she's 30, 63, she has also very uh, dense breast. So do you see something here? Maybe more difficult. Huh? Right, you see? Maybe here. Yes, it looks like. But uh, maybe it's density, so not so, so easy. And finally, we have a multifocal breast lesion here. So if I come back to this, maybe this distortion, yes, was with here. And we have four different lesions. You see, in this case, slightly um, small breast breast artifact, but on CC, but absolutely no, not really on um, MLO. 
And in this case, which is interesting is to compare with MRI. And this is the MRI. And finally, the lesion was seen on diffusion. But we know that sometimes on diffusion, uh, lesions are quite distortion, distorted in, in breast diffusion. But uh, it was clearly not really visible on, um, after contrast injection because the background enhancement was very high on uh, this MRI. And uh, when we compare with the contrast mammography, we don't have a very intense background enhancement. Also, that's, uh, that's why in this case it was a subtraction. And you see the lesion is there. We see because there is a distortion and, uh, on, the, um, on the gland. And um, I think that the uh, lesion was much more difficult to see on MRI. And it was fine also, of course, on ultrasound. Um, last case, so this patient is um, 66. And it's a recall after screening. And uh, um, very dense breast also. Do you see something? Right, left, you you can stop me. Here. 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 Yeah, maybe. It seems there is a little bit distortion, but uh, I'm not really confident. Uh, but finally, she was um, recalled for this, in fact. Uh, because um, small density, small asymmetric, but we are not completely sure. Nothing on ultrasound, and uh, because it could be only glandular tissue. So, uh, so finally, she had um, contrast mammography, and absolutely nothing. It was only glandular enhancement. So sometimes it looks like that glandular enhancement that's very high. Uh, you see small normal uptakes for normal lymph nodes. Uh, also, you can have normal lymph node enhancement. Um, and small breast in breast artifact, but not very important. And uh, when, we compare, when we compare the low energy view, you can see here, you can compare exactly that there is absolutely no uptake on this one. And finally, she had a follow up, and uh, it was absolutely nothing, so only um, glandular tissue. So also you can use a negative value of um, a CSM, which is uh, high, to uh, make your diagnosis. So to um, conclude, I would say it could be an interesting examination in, um, for an alternative to breast MRI, especially in case of breast cancer staging and non-conclusive mammography. I think there are the two main indications and also recall if the patient is recalled after a positive screening. You can start directly with uh, contrast mammography and if you have the technology, sometimes it's difficult to obtain an MRI in some countries, it, it depends. And also, which is interesting, that the same radiologist could uh, do the entire process. So the patient is referred to, to you for um, second advice. You will review the first medical file. You can perform a second local ultrasound. Um, if you don't find, you can uh, perform CSM instead of, of an MRI, stay here, and make an ultrasound after uh, CSM and biopsy if necessary. Because sometimes when the patient is referred for an MRI, sometimes you are not the doctors who perform the MRI. It could be done several days or, um, and so, Finally, they don't, there isn't any unity of uh, diagnosis. And also, I think this, this is a possibility to do everything in, uh, in one day. It's interesting. In my institution, we develop uh, the one-stop clinic where we, do, we try to do everything for diagnosis in one day. It's, it's a post-screening assessment. And uh, we developed a lot of these new technologies that has tomosynthesis, also uh, contrast mammography, all kind of biopsy to do everything in one stop to make um, the best diagnosis in when we can in, um, in one day. Also, it's inter interesting, this new version, because it will it reduce artifacts. So we have to also to prove it statistically. But since the first images, we can really uh, differentiate uh, uh, Cenobite HD and Cenobite images. 
uh, we have the impression that it improves qu image quality with reducing artifacts and increased signal noise ratio, especially in low contrast uptake, which can be more um, common in uh, uh, small lobular carcinoma or small DCIS, because this could be false negative of this technology, small DCIS and small lobular. So maybe it could improve this uh, detection. And of, co of course, still work in progress yet, but uh, maybe next commercial uh, technique. Thank you. Yes. But you don't have an ultrasound correlate for, are yes. you going to MRI? Very good question. Uh, yet, we, so of course, even uh, with a normal ultrasound, we perform second local ultrasounds. Usually, we can, as on MRI, we can find 50% of the cases. If we don't find it, if it's really suspicious, we, go, we uh, send the patient to MRI. And if we find something, we try to make an MR biopsy. But it's not, um, not uh, the final uh, aim to do that, because the final aim would be to biopsy on the CSM. It will, uh, it's one of the objectives of the future research on it. And uh, we are planning to try to do this next year, in to, to try to do both biopsy under tumor synthesis and biopsy under CSM. So what are you doing nowadays? Uh, today, uh, we, if it's, we see the lesion, so biopsy under MRI. And if we don't see on MRI, we consider that uh, maybe it could be a false positive, but usually, uh, it's not really uh, the case because we have a low, lower false positive rate. Um, but if we see the lesion on MRI, of course, we do the biopsy on MRI. If we don't see, we uh, make a follow-up. Hmm. Yes. So with using, using the high density uh, compared to the original CSM, um, a lot of times the last view there's a little bit of motion, and you do CC, MLO, and so on the last breast, last view. But because it's a shorter image time, do you find that that motion artifact has diminished? Yes. Also, uh, yes. We, uh, as the, there is we, all the technique to reduce uh, low exposure time, we we find it uh, reduces the movement artifacts also, and uh, and also it's uh, the examination is acquired faster, also. So it's faster, it's not so, maybe two minutes uh, reduction of time. So, it's, uh, but um, yes, it's an improvement also with this. Good. Yes. Hi, I was wondering how many patients are you using uh, CSM for staging over MRI? Um, after it depends of the organization. For example, um, uh, in our workflow, one third of our cancer patients are directly referred to the surgeon, uh, usually without any MRI, and uh, we review the case uh, in during uh, when the patient is sent to the surgeon. And in that uh, consultation, we see sometimes indications of breast MRI because we breast um, CSM. We don't perform breast MRI or breast CSM for every cancer cases in France. Yeah, the recommendations are for uh, dense breast or lobular carcinoma or discrepancy, uh, size discrepancy of one centimeter between mammography and ultrasound on inflammatory carcinoma or uh, MRI for high risk uh, women. But if the, dense is, the breast is dense and if we have the indications, if, if we have a doubt of a second lesions in that case, and especially when the patient is there, we don't have to send her to MRI, we do uh, the contrast mammography. And so, for example, in uh, my institution, we do uh, 450 CSM a year and uh, 60 to uh, 600 to 800 MRI. So maybe one one third, two third. After MRI, we don't we do a lot of um, screening also. And we do, we don't do screening with CSM. After it depends of if the patient is directly referred to the radiology unit or if you have time to plan something. But more and more um, we are 
we, we would like to do a CSM more than MRI because of the easiest technique and easy way to interpret. Also, it's uh, um, much faster more to interpret. And more and more, I found, I don't know if you have the same feeling, that um, breast MRI for staging is more and more complex to interpret with a uh, lot of multifocal lesion, with multifocal foci, so it becomes more and more difficult to characterize lesions. So, um, Do you also use, sorry, CSM for after neoadjuvant chemotherapy? Uh, not yet, not yet. Uh, it would be one project because um, in, in our workflow, the surgeon will ask the more likely an MRI. But um, there was one trial in Italy where they compare um, CSM and MRI with uh, exactly the same results with um, CSM and MRI. Yes, uh, yes, and so, but not so many publications do because uh, maybe for new trial or authorizations, but uh, it's easier also to organize a CSM uh, as an MRI. You have a form to make your appointments. It's uh, quite, you can include in a normal workflow without dedicated appointment. For us in our institution, we don't have a dedicated appointment. The patient comes. And if uh, we have an indication, we do it. After, it's a little bit longer, of course, than a normal mammography because we have to perfuse. But um, it, uh, it's in integrated in the day workflow. Any other question? Uh, yes, there is a question now. So when you have a patient that uh, was positive on the CSM, you can't see it on ultrasound, you send them for MRI, the mm. way we were talking about. Mm. Uh, sometimes what happens is that that area you saw on the CSM doesn't enhance on the MRI, but then you find these other little things. And uh, some of the radiologists feel compelled that they have to biopsy that. And mm. oftentimes those are negative. I wonder if you've had an experience like that. Yeah, very, very good um, comment and very good questions because uh, it's um, sometimes uh, really exactly what you say. So we, s we, we don't see, um, we see uh, many additional foci and we don't know what to do with. And so, of course, um, and on, f on uh, MRI, if we do MRI, we don't have to have a very high f false positive rate. If we have that, we cannot do any MRI. So we have to try to characterize using not only contrast MRI, but only T2, maybe diffusion, and make a multimodal parametric uh, um, uh, evaluation or assessment. Uh, sometimes we have to do biopsy, but usually we do second look ultrasound and uh, including all these uh, tools, but it's, that's why it's more complicated. Now we organize uh, a uh, special visit with double reading of MRI because uh, some some people maybe are more anxious, radiologists and positive everything, and uh, we know that uh, according the shape, the symmetry, etc., that is not uh, suspicious, and we have to follow up. Uh, I think the, it's not easy uh, because there is no recommendation, but to my experience, I think the false positive rate of MRI must be lower than 10%. Yes, it's not uh, not really easy, but uh, that's more. That's why that's more and more complicated. And uh, since several years, we implemented uh, a very high resolution protocol MRI. So the images are um, we have two MRI and three test line 1.5, and on both MRI we have a high resolution uh, protocol images. So images are good quality, but more and more we have foci, and maybe the lesion also are more complex now, maybe. And uh, so that's why, and sometimes we have to organize a follow-up on MRI also, which is uh, also an issue because of the, all the questions about uh, gadolinium um, in the brain, and especially for high-risk women. We know that some patients could have, some women, maybe three to four MRI in one year, and during 20 years, 30 years. So we don't know what key we could do. So it could be an issue for contrast uh, mammography, but
today, I will not recommend uh, screening, but um, maybe if, could we, if, you, if we could reduce uh, more, again, uh, radiation dose, uh, why not? Mm. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. You have another. Uh, how many contact reactions have you had with your uh, We had some. In, to my knowledge, we had three. For, um, we started to do it routinely since uh, 2012, maybe. 2012 in uh, routine. And three, three shock with. Um, so, of course, it's, you have to be organized because you know that it can occur. And, uh, but as we, we are in a hospital, so the, all the um, technologists for um, uh, reanimation, the reanimation, uh, well, to uh, care, I guess. health uh, for oh. emerge emergency three has shocks, to be how there. How many exams, Corinne? How many exams? You said three shocks. Uh, but how many? 450 uh, 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 since uh, uh, five years. Uh, more than 3,000 um, 3, uh, imaging acquisitions, three shocks. So one per thousand mm. reactions. Reactions with, um, uh, with um, not only um, with. Um, uh, reduce uh, heart pressure. So we had to uh, make some emergency doctors come, but finally we don't have any uh, any uh, deaths for this, of uh, fortunately. But uh, one patient has to stay uh, 24 hours in the, um, in the hospital. But so it's not very common, as exactly as the same uh, level as we have on CT, on CT, and, and also on MRI it can occur. But um, so the technician has to be teach also to know exactly to say and to make the, the pressure and uh, etc. 